unless you put something between them. I happen to have a third polarizer right here. So here's the cross polarizers. No lights getting through because they're crossed. And this is just a polarizer. I can look at it. I can find its TA and everything. And if I put it in front, nothing happens. And if I put it in behind them, nothing happens. But if I put it like that, suddenly the light gets through. Okay. So there is a way to get the light through the cross polarizers. Let's do the math before we talk about how this is blowing our minds. Okay. Let's look at a polarizer at an angle. So let's see, um, uh, a theta above the horizontal. Okay, and by that I mean, uh, you know, if, if this is the horizontal, we have the polarizer like this, and it's TA. Of course, we're always talking about it's TA. It's TA above the horizontal is an angle theta. Then its matrix looks like this. It's cosine squared theta there, and then it's sine theta cosine theta and it's sine theta, cosine theta. That's sine theta times cosine theta, sine theta times cosine theta. And then it's sine squared theta down here. That's the matrix for um, a polarizer at an angle. And you can plug in and see it gives the right number for horizontal and vertical polarizers. So let's see if we could explain how that light got through those polarizers. So we have sort of what, however you want to describe it as unpolarized light coming out of the lamp and it's hitting first, I want to match my notes, say a vertical polarizer like that and then it's hitting a polarizer at some angle like that and then finally it's hitting the horizontal polarizer. And does anything get through? It kind of looked like something got through. So all we got to do is describe it with matrices, with the Jones calculus. So we have 1, 1. That's the input light. And then it got hit, by, or it went through a vertical polarizer, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then it went through that polarizer, and I held it at 45 degrees. Let's do the case of 45 degrees. Cosine squared of 45 degrees is a half. Right? It's square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 over 2 is 2 over 4, half. Half, half, half. So at 45 degrees, the matrix is just four halves. Half, 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 half. And then finally, the kicker that takes it be zero is zero, zero, zero. Right? So we multiply that out. Let's see what we get. Well, don't do this one yet. And don't do this one yet. Well, let's multiply these two. Zeros gives you zero on top, and zero times zero, one is zero, one times one is one, so it gives you one on the bottom. And as you'd predict, you get polarized light in there. Then you multiply this one. We're still sitting here with one zero, zero, zero. Let's see, one half times zero is zero, one half times one is one half. And then this bottom part, one half times zero is zero, one half times one is one half. So when we go through this polarizer, we actually have two components again. We have a half up, and we have some this way. Well, if that's the case, when you multiply this times this, you might get something out. And sure enough, you do. Uh, one times a half is a half, plus zero times a half is zero. So you get a half. And then zero, zero gives you zero. But that's light. So something does get through, according to the Jones calculus. Okay? If we had multiplied these out of order, you'd get zero. And as soon as you do this one times this one, you always get zero. But just like in the physical world, if we put something in between, you don't get zero anymore. So the math is the same as the, as the, the reality. If you put it behind, you get nothing. If you put it in front, you get nothing. If you put it in between, then some light gets through. Half the light gets through. If I rotate it up, you get nothing because it's really just duplicating one of the polarizers. If I rotate it down, you get nothing, because it's duplicating one of the polarizers. It has a lot of chalk on it that's scattering light. Right? See, that's chalk dust. There you go, goes away. 
I get a lot of chalk dust. Okay. What's going on here? Some people find this amazing. Sometimes people find this mind blowing. Sometimes people don't find it mind blowing. And then when they explain why it should be mind blowing, it blows their mind. Some people don't care. But it is kind of interesting that we have a case of two polarizers blocking all the light. And by inserting an absorber, right, this absorbs a component of the light, you can get the light to go through. Why does adding an absorber let the light go through? Seems kind of strange, doesn't it? Well, we can kind of try to describe it here. Basically, a polarizer can rotate light. Okay? So here, the light was up. And by having something absorbed this way, since this is at 45 degrees to this, which we thought of as up, it's actually its anisotropy is now at 45 degrees to this. So in the opinion of this uh, polarizer that's been turned, its anisotropy is on a different axis than this one. So it doesn't see this as up, it sees this as 45 degrees, as split between two components. So it just takes one and or it just cuts it in a way that when you go back to this axis, you now have two components again. Okay? That's not very satisfying. In terms of electromagnetic waves, the thing that lets me sleep at night and not worry about this is the way I think of it is the light that comes in on this side is not the same as the light that came out on that side. Right? The light comes in on this side, starts vibrating electrons. Those electrons vibrate due to the crazy things going on in this material. And then the light you get is the electrons on the back side vibrating. So you can kind of say it's not the same light. So in terms of electromagnetic theory, it's not so bad. If you start thinking about photons, it starts to get kind of weird. Right? Why, why does this happen? So you can decide if this blows your mind or not. It's up to you.